Um, actually, before I share my screen, what I'm going to do is just quickly um, explain why I created focus drivers in the first place. And hopefully there's some resonance. And if, you know, I don't want people to look at this like it's prescriptive. It's does this work for you or are there elements that work for you that will help you and make things a little bit better? But the reason I created focus drivers was because I, I, I would find myself quite diligent and quite good at executing on tasks. But over time, I realized that it was more the number of tasks that I felt like I was delivering. And that felt like a kind of success metric to me. If I got 10 tasks done in a day versus getting two tasks done. And it also started to indicate to me that I'm easily distracted, that I can jump from one task to another task. And what, what that also meant was I procrastinated an awful lot. So I read so much on kind of deep work and focused learning and, you know, shallow versus deep that I thought if you were in a deep work state or a deep focus state, you were doing something of work. So I actually escaped doing the work by learning, by conversing with people, doing stuff that required my deep focus, but actually didn't have an outcome or some sort of execution or deliverable for it. So I spent so much time kind of, you know, jumping around with stuff like that, going from learning to executing back to learning that the tasks were kind of, I suppose, controlling my day. And some days you would be working on a task and you just can't get it finished, you know, and it's lunchtime. And it's like, OK, let's take that extra 20 minutes to finish this. 20 minutes turns into an hour. An hour turns into two hours. You've completely skipped lunch or, you know, instead of finishing at five o'clock, you're finishing at seven o'clock. And strangely, that, that left me drained rather than feeling successful. It, when I had those kind of heavy sessions of a full-on day, it, I, I, I would sometimes kind of, uh, Tom, I know you're unwell today, but actually, you know, that's real. But I would sometimes kind of think, am I unwell because I feel really, really tired or I have a headache or whatever it may be. And instead of having some sort of, um, you know, motivation behind completing those tasks, it was quite the opposite. I, I felt tired, I felt lethargic, I felt grumpy, I felt, you know, on, on the edge all the time. And for me, I, I spent so much time reading stuff and, you know, looking at getting things done, looking at atomic habits, looking at deep flow. And what I, what I also kind of done is I looked at myself and I looked at how we do stuff. And what I started to realize was that focus of flow states can only be maintained for 90 minute sessions. And there's two kind of components to this 90 minute session. And one is to get into a flow state, you need a ramp up phase. And a ramp up phase is typically about 20 minutes. So if you get distracted halfway through, you're back to the start and you need that ramp up phase again. But also really importantly, the thing that I wasn't applying was a recovery phase because after 90 minutes, our brain starts releasing chemicals that lead to tiredness, that lead to depression, that lead to anxiety. And I thought it was just, there was so much work I had to do. And I kind of, I, I realized that there was so many tasks, but there wasn't enough time. So I kind of thought I have to find a way to kind of figure it out a different way because tasks don't care about my capabilities. Tasks are like, they're unforgiving. And task management apps, their goal is just to let you put as many tasks in as possible and add as many deadlines and essentially add as much work to your day. And when you tick off a, a task, it, it feels good, but it also typically disappears with an app. So that kind of success of the whole day or that retrospective doesn't actually work. So what I decided to do is I, I, I decided to create something that was based more on my capabilities in any given day or any given hour, because everything I've read is planned with best case scenario rather than real case scenario. And I realized that I may have lots of tasks planned for today that may work really, really well. But when I sit down, it could be like, Tom, you could be sick today. You could be just demotivated today. Or you could have lots and lots of energy that you don't have tomorrow. And that kind of, you know, sometimes when you spend two hours doing a task, banging your head off a wall, and then you come back the next day fresh, and you come in and you do it in 10 minutes and you're like, why did I not stop yesterday? Why did I not do that? And for me, it wasn't the task. It was the capabilities and the motivations that were behind them. So I started looking at how how are we, how can we be more rounded and how can we approach this more like an athlete does? 
that we're actually ready for this, but we also have phases of downtime and phases of kind of, you know, enlightenment and experiments as well. So that's that's kind of the genesis of where I came with focus drivers to make something that's a little bit more flexible and a little bit more real for me rather than kind of, you know, promising I'm going to always do everything because as a human, that just doesn't happen. I love it. And I think that's one of the things, um, just before you, you jump in, that's one of the things yeah. that drew me to it the most was just that re- realness of it. Like, it feels real. Like, you know, not trying to say you're productive when all the time, 100% of the time. It's like, use your mm-hmm. feelings, use your current state of mind and everything to kind of work the best way possible for you. So, yeah, super excited to show this. And anyone anyone listening, and throw your questions for Dave into the, the Q&A, and we'll have a bit of time afterwards to jump into those as well. So, yeah, over to you, Dave. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and look, you're, you're totally right. The, the realistic part, um, I heard a quote the other day, which was, um, you know, bundling tasks and bundling that kind of um, so-called productivity onto onto one day and adding all the, those extra items into your day. It's like you're stealing brain cycles from the next day. And that, for me, really, really kind of resonated to, I suppose, to, to allow you to switch off or to have an end point. And for me, tasks... They're always underestimated. We always go into tasks with naive optimi- optimism that we say it's going to take five minutes to do this task. And anyone that's ever timed any of the tasks will know it never, ever takes five minutes. Multiply by six easily, and that's a more accurate figure. So I, I wanted to create something that allows you to have different phases and allows you not just to set a phase at the start of a day, but to kind of be able to look at those phases and assess your motivations and capabilities throughout the day. So this is where focus drivers kind of give that the genesis and focus drivers is made up of four different modes. And the, I suppose the easiest way to kind of explain the difference between them is, is responsibilities and interruptions and energy levels. So we have some tasks that we have to deliver. We have to use the knowledge we already have. And we also have some tasks that we don't. We have to go off and learn new knowledge so we can then you know, sell those services and do something else. But likewise, we have tasks that we actually don't really assign to ourselves because most task management productivity is based on work rather than being fully rounded. We don't assign ourselves a task to go to gym. I do, but most people don't. So. The, the first mode is park mode and park mode is really it's it's a downtime. It's it's to be intentional about being fully rounded. It's a way to actually say, OK, when I have a heavy task, I need to after that heavy task, I need to park. So like I said earlier on about having a 90 minute flow state, you, you, you can't just continue on from a 90 minute flow state and go in straight into the next flow state and straight into the next flow state. So park is really important because it it allows you to add in tasks and say, okay, I'm going to add a task today for visiting a friend, walking the dog, going to the gym, that when I come back and I tackle this deep work that I need to do, I'm gonna be really ready for this as well. And it's, it's also intentional because what I do find as somebody who really enjoys work and, and probably has an addictive personality is that I find it really hard to switch off from work sometimes. Sometimes I go on holidays and it takes me three days before I'm fully relaxed and can stop checking emails and stuff like that. And what Park also does is because it has a defined time, you know, this is a recommended time and people can experiment with this. But because there's a defined time in this, it also lets me know when I can go into the next flow state as well. So it's not like, I have to completely switch off and, oh my God, when when am I going to do this work? This is to say, okay, you're taking 30 minutes or 60 minutes right now, but that's fine. So you will be back in 30 to 60 minutes to do the next task that you need to output as well. So it's kind of like saying, take a breath. It's okay. You will get back to this in a few minutes, but it's clearly defined that you know when you're going to return to this as well. So it's it's really important when you have kind of heavy days, when you have a lot of a lot of kind of high cognitive work to do, that you put in park sessions where possible. And it depends on it also depends on how you stack your work as well. That your park sessions can be five minutes, they can be they can be up to 90 minutes. But you know, even let's say before we started this session, 
I was finishing some notes for this. But then I went and I got some water and I took a few minutes and I chatted to the kids and my wife and and I tried to mentally switch off from what we were going to do because this needs my full attention. It deserves my full attention. But to give it my full attention, I have to, before this, say, okay, I'm going to change from one mode to the next mode. I'm going to change from being analytical and taking notes to actually now conversing with people and trying to get a point across. So with PARC, it's it's also your responsibilities in PARC, they, they can be high or low. And what I mean by that is responsibilities could be you said you're going to go and meet a friend, but there's no there's no kind of high cognition to meet a friend. So, but you still have a responsibility. Likewise, you could decide I'm going to read a book, I'm going to go on a walk. You have really no responsibilities for anybody there. Also, what's really important is that the outcome is undefined. And what I mean by that is you're not trying to check off an item here. You're not trying to get forward with something. It's intentional to say, I'm I'm stopping with the mental focus now. I'm stopping with the tunnel vision. I'm just going, I'm going to think about anything and everything and nothing. You know, anybody that does meditation will tell you that meditation is not about blocking everything out. It's about letting everything flow. So you you, because everything is undefined, think about what you want, do what you want. And that allows you then to go back and not feel guilty about giving your full focus when you go to an actual really kind of, you know, narrow focus session. The, the next mode is off-road mode. And um, off-road mode, the reason I created off-road mode is because when you have deep work versus shallow work or deep focus versus shallow focus, there, there is no kind of defined outcomes or responsibilities. And, and like I said at the start, I would procrastinate by doing a course because it needs my full attention. It needs my deep focus. But off-road is intentional that it has no clearly defined outcomes. It has low responsibility. Off-road is your chance to sharpen the blade, master your craft, to go. If, if somebody is attending this or somebody is watching this on YouTube later on, they are probably going off-road because there's no, nothing is clearly defined. They have no idea what I'm going to say, what they should be doing from it. So they're mentally experimenting. So you can go and do that and you can have that time. But to experiment, you also need to give those experiments. Sometimes you need to give them your undivided attention. Sometimes you need to set a block and say, okay, I'm going to do this course for the next 90 minutes. I have no idea of the outcome of this course, or I'm going to try build a website, or I'm going to try start, you know, figuring something out. But because there's no responsibilities, that reduces the stress. And that also encourages you to be more creative, to try new things, to figure stuff out as well. But, off-road is intentional to let you to let you know when you're in this mode that you know are you here for experiments or should you actually be doing something should you be delivering with the skills you already have and if you should be delivering with the skills you already have that's where sports mode comes in so off-road and sports mode are both deep focus modes but sports mode is a deep focus mode using the knowledge you already have with clearly defined responsibilities and deliverables. So for me, I know I have to deliver something today to chat to you guys and explain this process. So I, I'm in sports mode right now. I have all of my distractions are off. My focus on this is really high, but also my energy should be high. So by actually, instead of just saying, I have to go and I have to give a talk today and present something, that's just one random task. And another random task would spring up and each one of them has a variance in them. But by saying I have to be an offer, I have to be in sports mode for the next 90 minutes, that allows me over time to start building those kind of muscle memories, those triggers and habits to say, how do I individually get into sports mode myself? How do I get my energy high? Is that about sleep the night before? Is it about not doing highly taxing work an hour or two before that do i need it do i need a way to plan this or is it about having a, a park mode maybe for 30 minutes before i go into this mode because for me again responsibility is 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 really important here to give it your full focus but i don't think i don't think everybody kind of looks at it as let's get into a focus mode they look at it as i have a task and there's so many pressures behind the task. There's so many personalities behind the task and so many variances. But the problem is, 
it's really difficult to start building habits and triggers then because each task is so different. So for me, sports mode is really, really essential. And it's kind of, it's the heavy lifting. It's the stuff that really pays your bill. That kind of 80, 20 sports mode is the 20%. And for me, I aim to do two to three sports mode sessions per day of roughly 90 minutes. But because it's deep focus, the recommended time is at least 30 minutes because you need that ramp up of 20 minutes when you start a sports mode as well. And likewise, when this is finished, you then will need some sort of recovery phase, more than likely in a park mode. The last mode is eco mode. And eco mode is for stuff that you can essentially do on autopilot. It is the kind of low cognitive functional tasks that it's it's okay. I can send an email, I can send an invoice, I can I can send a quick text or I can update a quick bit of code on a website. It's not something I have to sit and ponder on. And the reason it's defined like this as well is because eco mode is the is the mode that allows the floodgates of interruption. So it's okay to be focused in sports mode. It's okay to turn off interruptions when you're in sports mode or off-road mode or also likewise park mode. It's okay not to take that phone call in the gym because you will have a chance to open up interruptions. So eco mode has low cognitive tasks, but that also means that there's no, you don't suffer from that 20 minute ramp up to get back into a flow phase. But what you can do with eco mode is you can group all of these low cognitive tasks together and still have an actual focus mode of 90 minutes. But it's okay during that 90 minutes, I get a phone call, perfectly fine, I'll answer you. And the reason it's also there and the reason it allows interruptions is because I think so many people, again, plan with best case scenario and say, yes, I'll have that for you tomorrow or I'll get this for you tomorrow or the next day. And then you know, work and tasks and life gets in the way. And we don't deliver what we say we're going to deliver. And then your word becomes less important and you, people can't trust what you say as much and believe what you say, but also you can trust what you say. So it has that kind of vicious cycle of kind of overestimating and then you become harsh on yourself, but you overestimated in the first place. So the idea of ego mode is to, allow those floodgates but then when you go into sports mode it allows you to without guilt to turn off those interruptions to do that actual that high level stuff that you said you were going to deliver and you then you, you're fine turning off any mode you have ego mode is also good at um kind of motivating you and and as part of a ramp up towards other modes so i'll give you a quick example um Last week, I had a day where I was just really tired. I just felt really run down. And, you know, with winter in Ireland, it's horrible weather and rain. And we have lightning storms today. So if I disappear off the screen, I'm not dead. It's just electricity is gone. But I I had a lot of tasks that I'd planned in the morning. And two hours later, I, I wasn't getting anywhere with them. And it, it becomes a little bit demotivating. And there's a little bit of guilt that sets in. But... Because I have eco mode, I said, okay, I'm not going to tax my brain now because my brain is not ready for this now. Let's switch from the sports mode that I had planned. Let's switch into the eco mode and let's do tasks that are related to eco mode. And those were really low level tasks. Send a quick invoice, send an email, really, really simple stuff. But they actually built my motivation up over the next 30 minutes. I'm actually getting stuff done. And this is really easy. This is simple. And I started to forget about the demotivating part of not achieving what you're doing. And within an hour, I had got a lot of small, low-level tasks done, stuff that still needed to be done for the business. But within an hour, I was ready to move into a sports mode. So I took a quick break, 10 minutes, reset my brain. But but I, I it was like, ego mode was like stretching for me before going on a run that I was not able for the run. So let's go have some light stretches. Let's do a small walk. And then we're ready to move into this. That makes sense so far? Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a how to use focus drivers and how I use them. But in this document, and I'm more than happy to share this with anybody, I'm sure we'll have a link in the video as well. What I do say is that this this is not instructions. This is how I do some things. This is how I plan some stuff. 
but focus drivers is it's it's above tasks so it's a way to segment and categorize tasks and group tasks but it's also a way for you to analyze what you're ready for am i motivated enough do i have enough energy you know to actually approach high level tasks can i do a sports mode or can i do an eco mode right now or am i only suitable for you know park right now do i need to take the next two hours and not do anything and come back around i would much rather somebody done that than had the whole day dwindle away from them because that will only set in more of the feeling of procrastination the feeling of guilt as well if you can do low level stuff or you can intentionally say no i'm not able i am taking this time off for the next two hours that will really stand to you that you know there's so many hours in the day that just because you're not motivated in the morning does not mean you won't be motivated later on throughout the day. So if you can have little small things to build you up. But focus drivers, is it, it's suitable for daily planning. It's suitable for task management. It's suitable for time boxing. But to be very clear, focus drivers is a set of principles and processes that I apply to tasks. It's not an app. You can use it with any app. It makes no difference if you use it with a bullet journal and you go old school. If you write it in as tasks in craft, you use things or to do list or whatever you may use. For me, what I start with is I start with responsibilities and motivations. And they really dictate what you're going to do for the day. I'm not trying to preach and say that focus drivers allows you to do anything you want every day and it's going to be rosy and you just stay in this beautiful you know sports and off-road mode all day you know you you have stuff you have to do whether it be meetings whether it be deliverables that are promised for today they are the things that have to be done so you start and you assess and you look at the tasks that have to be done or you look at what's in your calendar for today but then after you know what must be done this is not everything not everything on your list it's what must be done after that you look internally on your motivations. What are you actually capable of? What are you drawn towards today? So it, you know, your whole day may not be dominated by must be done tasks. I really do hope that it's not dominated by that because because we overpromise. If there's so many must be done, they actually won't all be done. And what I do is I assign a focus driver mode to each of the tasks that must be done, and. Once you've assigned focus driver modes to them, you you then start to see patterns and you start to see groups of focus mode tasks. I'll then assign an estimated time to each one of them. I know it's not necessarily going to be that amount of time, but the idea here is, is to be realistic about stuff, to not underestimate and not go in with you know naivety. The idea here is to say, I think this task is going to take roughly 15 minutes it could take a half an hour. I can group three or four tasks together and I can build a 90 minute focus drivers mode around this. But the completion metric for you is not completing all those tasks within that focus driver mode. The completion metric is I have finished that 90 minutes focus session. I have actually stayed for 90 minutes in sports mode. Well done me. That if you were staying in a focus state, you will get more stuff done than if you were jumping backwards and forwards and trying to figure stuff out. So after we've kind of planned all of the must be dones and the motivation, we then group similar tasks. This is kind of filling in the blanks. Is there anything else that we have left for the day? We still have time left in the day. You may have a focus session of eco mode that currently only has 30 minutes in it. And there may be some more tasks that we can fill in the blanks and we can add in another 30 or 40 minutes to plan out that whole session. <clears throat> Then I would start the day, I would start on the first focus driver session. And obviously that's based on the start, based on responsibilities and motivations. And the idea is to follow the, follow the interruptions and follow the activity levels that I've already laid out in the document. But also it's to stay aware throughout that session of your motivations, of your capabilities. And by, by staying aware of a mode rather than so many tasks in a session, it's much easier for your working memory. I mean, your working memory can only kind of roughly remember kind of six to eight items at any one time. And if you have to remember all the variants of every task that you have to do today, that's going to become really difficult. Whereas if you have to remember, am I in sports mode? Am I acting like I'm in sports mode? Do I feel I'm, I'm still capable to continue in sports mode? That's a much simpler question. That's much more yes, no. 
and much easier for you to just remember one sports mode. You know, task managers will remember what tasks you have there. You don't need to remember the tasks in the back of your brain. You need to remember what mode and what capabilities have you there. And should you continue to do it or should you change? Okay, okay. I'm going to switch tracks and just go into my daily planning app and just show you guys exactly what I've said here, but just show it in practice. And again, this is a daily planning app I use called Sunsama, but it makes no difference if somebody has a piece of paper in front of them and they write down their tasks, if they do it in craft or they do it in things or wherever works for them. But the main thing is to have some sort of way to actually assign focus driver modes to everything that you do, to all the tasks that you have planned for the day. So when it comes to Wednesday here, you will see I have gym and I have one hour in the gym and it's in park mode. When I've done, it's checked off. But I'm just planning out the day first thing in the morning. So with this client, I, I know straight away with this client, okay, this is a low level task. This should only take me 10 minutes. But in actuality, this task took me 25 minutes. So that's done. And likewise, I can see sports mode. This is what we're doing here today. So this needs my full focus, needs all of my attention. And I've planned an hour to do this. And then you can see some other tasks I have here that are assigned as eco mode, you know, updated invoice template. That's straightforward. That's just typing some stuff in a keyboard. If somebody rings me during that, it's perfectly fine. I'll just save progress and I go back to it in 10 or 15 minutes. That's fine. So you can see that all of these eco tasks are grouped together to allow me just to get into eco mode. I'm in eco mode. I'm in a much more relaxed mode. Interrupt me if you need to. If you don't, great. I'll try to get through all of these as fast as possible. And then likewise, we have something here that has 90 minutes and it's sports mode. So that needs my full focus. But that was that was people's opportunity to interrupt me before this. That's fine. So I go in guilt-free into this task, what I'm going to do. And what I do with a daily plan is I integrate in with my calendar. So I can see what tasks we have on the calendar here. And, and all I have to do is click add the task and you can see there prep for craft so realistically i would need to be in a sports mode to do that prep because that's a clearly defined outcome and i'm using skills i already have i'm not trying to learn something new on the fly way too unpredictable and i would probably make a mess of things when it came back but if i had planned this out this way and i had some tasks in between so let's say that was like you know four o'clock there was that's set in stone this was planned at two o'clock and I have some stuff that I had to get done during it, I would make sure, because it's a heavy lift, that I would put in some sort of break, whether it be a coffee break, whether it be chatting with friends or family, I would put a break in before we come on to this session. And I would probably estimate that I would need, say, 15 minutes at least for a break so that I can, I can mentally shed all of the focus on the other tasks, the other anxiety if I didn't get stuff done, and I can start to align myself and start to kind of ramp up towards being able to come and, and give this my full focus now. Also, this is just daily planning, but obviously you're going to add tasks throughout the day for tomorrow or next week or whatever it may be. So here is Todoist, which just integrates into Sunsama. But again, it makes no difference if you had to copy and paste this stuff in or you wrote it down in the journal. What I do is I add new tasks into Todoist and they have a label. So I just label them off-road or sports if I know what they are. If I don't know what they are, I'm just putting a quick task in. I just put a quick task in. I'm not trying to be uber diligent about categorizing stuff. But when it comes to tasks, I generally know, unless it's something new, I generally know, okay, yeah, look, get Apple Care for iPhone. Very straightforward. Filling in a form, I can be interrupted for this. Um, whereas, you know, Try, try Fig Jam for design inspiration. That's like, should their business move to using Fig Jam instead of what we use Miro at the moment? So that's not a clear deliverable. That's get in there and experiment. Get, get your hands a bit dirty and figure stuff out. So I may decide, okay, let's bring that in. And that's going to be an off-road mode. So I'm going to then, I'm going to then plan, let's say, 30 minutes to try that out. So I know straight away when it becomes time, I'm not looking at all these tasks throughout the day. I'm, I'm working on, you know, prep for craft. 
And when I finish that session of, you know, whatever the time was I allotted to that, then I move on to this. And I know straight away when I see off-road, it's like, okay, relax. Just go in there, have fun, see what works, see what doesn't work. You're not trying to make a clear business decision on this. But if I decided from those experiments that Fig Jam was suitable, well, then that would then instigate a new task. And that new task could be tomorrow. And that could be just, you know, boy, Fig Jam. And that, again, is very straightforward. That's an ego mode. That's just going straight onto the website, filling in your credit card details, and you're done. So there's such variance in each project that having these modes allows you to kind of say, okay, are these big, heavy lifts? Are these small, cognitive tasks? Does that make sense, offer? Yeah, love it. Um, and just wanted to remind people listening in, throw your questions in the Q&A. We will be stopping before the end, starting a bit of Q&A as well. So yeah, really, really cool so far. Okay, let me switch back into craft. Yeah, and we'll share this. I'll, I'm more than happy to share this that people can duplicate this with craft duplicate feature as well. And um, what's also really useful about having focus drivers as a way to group tasks together is retrospectives. And looking back and saying, okay, well, this week I spent lots of time in sports mode is way more helpful for me next week than saying I spent lots of time on tasks this week, on specific tasks, because you probably won't repeat those specific tasks, especially if they're kind of high cognitive stuff that's figuring stuff out, applying your skills. You're probably not doing the exact same task. There's some variance in it next week. So it becomes really hard to look at retrospectives. So for me, looking at this, I'm looking for balance in my day, in my week, in my month, when I review this. And that's where estimating a time and actually tracking your time becomes beneficial so that you can see. So this one here is just, um, this is just like a, a weekly digest that it breaks stuff down on Sun Sama. But again, you use time tracking software and you say, okay, I have four projects. Instead of client projects, you say I have four projects. Sport, eco, park, off-road. And you can apply all of those and just track your time on those four metrics rather than tracking your time on, on individual stuff. Obviously, you're going to track client stuff if it's billable, but I'm talking about tracking your own individual time and how you apply this. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to kind of inoculate procrastination that I can see if I've went off-road mode too many times. Well, th what that's probably indicating to me is what I'm working on, I clearly don't know enough about right now if I'm spending so much time trying to figure out stuff and experimenting and stuff. And that could that could be okay if I'm starting a new business or I'm starting you know a new side hustle or whatever it may be. But if I'm trying to get stuff in and pay bills, I have to be aware that I have to deliver on the skill set that I'm already billing people for, that I'm already utilizing. So I want a good chunk of my day to be in sports mode and a good chunk of my week to be in sports mode. Also, what it allows me to do is it allows me to look internally. And if I see there is too much time being spent in one specific mode, then I can start to figure out, well, what are the triggers? What are the habits that I need to establish to actually help me have a more balanced and rounded day or a balanced and rounded week? How can I put stuff in place? Because we have the difficulty here of being in the digital age. We, we, don't, have as, we don't have many workspaces. We move from an app, but we're still in the same computer screen. We're still sitting at the same chair. So we don't have that muscle memory where, you know, an architect will be on the drawing table when he's doing drawings and then he will move somewhere else. So having having this sports mode is a way to also figure out are there ways for me to, to physically trigger stuff in my environment that enables me to move in. Do I make my favorite cup of green tea when I get into, you know, off-road mode? Do I make something else when I get into sports mode? Or whatever works for people. It could be switching from one app to another app. But the idea is that it's predictable over time. You can become stronger and you can stage change into different sports modes much faster and easier rather than just jumping from one task with all the worries that are behind each one of those tasks and all the variants that are behind them. That makes sense. Any questions? Absolutely. <clears throat> we have had two questions from Jim, actually. Um, 
The first is, uh, what's the reason or background for using the automobile uh, metaphor? Uh, and he said, for example, why not use sports or something uh, high focus related instead? But uh, yeah, any background about the metaphor? Um, yes, there there is. Um, I looked at so many different metaphors and um, whilst whilst I, I like the idea of sports, sports was definitely one of them that I looked at. Um, I found that driving was more universal and instantly understandable and you know in Ireland we have crazy sports like Gaelic football and hurling that people you know outside Ireland will go what are these things and likewise in different countries they're different sports um what I what I like about the, the driving mods is that it's very easy to say to somebody how much focus would you have if you were driving on a racetrack you have to be really focused you can't bang off the sides there's gonna be trouble likewise if you were driving through a forest in a four by four and you know really enjoying it you would still need focus there you would still need to be diligent you could not be interrupted in those modes whereas if you hit cruise control and you were on a big highway or motorway in your car and you were able to multitask and i don't mean multitask because we can't do that. But what I mean is you you could be driving while listening to the radio, while chatting to a friend on the phone. You could have interruptions come in. So that's where in eco mode, that's where driving from a very, very simple state comes from. And likewise with, with park, you know, it park does what it says in the tin. You stop. You stop that high level of focus because we we can't do that indefinitely. That's just we're we're going to burn out. But what I would say is this focus drivers is what works for me. And you know, the the reason they're also part of the reason that they're actually called um park off-road sports and eco is because they spell out pose. And that for me is the recommendation is for everybody to pose the question on every task what is this task so i wanted something that was easy to remember but was universal as well other people may decide well i don't like eco mode i'm going to call it something else like i'm going to call it cruise control or whatever it may be but that's something that i actually debated backwards and forwards for for maybe a year with different people until until i hit on focus drivers but it's only a name that for me is it's 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 to be easy to remember you know, I come yeah. from a design and a branding point of view, and that's all I want is that it's easy to remember. If somebody comes up with a dick, different acronym that works for them, perfectly happy. I like it. And I think what you said to me before as well is it's also, it doesn't have so many preconceived like ideas about what it actually represents either. Um, you know, if we start calling it like CEO mode versus worker mode, that's already got kind of a, yeah. a, a glance at what these modes are. Always, this is very fresh um so that's that's cool as well yeah like if i said to you how would you drive on a racetrack versus how would i drive that's quite individual but i, I do think yeah with with kind of stuff like coaches or players or whatever it may be there's definitely those kind of preconceived biases that, that we can have in them and focus drivers originally was named maker manager master which was much more role based and di didn't kind of expand on that and I found when you explain it to people, we had, you know, some people are managers and think managers are the best thing that were ever created. Some people work for terrible managers and think managers should bore in hell. So having that kind of role, it was more, I couldn't put myself into the shoes of a manager versus a maker. Whereas we have one car here and I can just switch modes. It's, you know, the focus, the fo I would say flow is your vehicle. And the focus modes is what you're actually trying to change, how you actually channel and funnel that flow and steer it. Love it. <clears throat> so Jim's second question is somewhat related to what I was wanting to ask as well. Uh, it's something along the lines of, um, he, he actually asks, uh, you know, you need to be very self-aware um, to kind of figure out your own condition, to figure out um, which mode to use and when. Um, do you have any, ex can you talk about your experience with that? Like what has helped your self-awareness? Um, does it get easier with time? And yeah, any, any other tips around that sort of thing? Yes, yes. That, 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 that's an absolutely brilliant question. Um, I, I would say, yes, it is definitely about being self-aware and everything that I've learned in the last few years about kind of output and productivity has 
actually being much more about your core, your self-awareness, your emotional anchors to what you do, rather than here is a defined step-by-step process. But this is also why it's intentionally short and simple, is to just have it in the back of your mind all the time. What mode am I in? Am I okay in this mode? Am I happy in this mode? Am I productive in this mode? Or would I be better off doing this mode later on? So I suppose I'm just going to look. I have a note here that I had on this. Just give me one second here. Really, what I would say about kind of being self-aware is this is also about motivation. This is about you feeling successful each day from using focus drivers and being motivated to do it again tomorrow and it becomes easier tomorrow and the next day and so on but you know that that kind of zygonic effect of not getting tasks done they stick in your brain and spending an hour on a task you'd plan to spend an hour but you didn't get the task finished that feels like a negative to me and i like i said you know task management and tasks in general they have no empathy and they don't care about us but to say you spent 60 minutes or 90 minutes in the focus driver mode, there's a sense of accomplishment there to actually say, okay, I have actually completed this. And it's like, it's individual to people as well, what they do in an off-road mode versus what they do in a park mode. You know, I suggest things. I say you can go and you can, you can go to gym or walk the dog or read a book, but different people have different ways of mentally shedding focus. It, you, what I would say is the guides are here to say, you know, what attention levels do you need for this specific focus mode? And when you duplicate this document, you should be able to see as a kind of quick preview, all of these within craft. So for sports mode, you know, it's, it's much more about attention, energy and interruptions and outcomes. But they're, they're also based on the tasks that you have in front of you. And you should know naturally what those tasks are. That that part is not necessarily about self-awareness. That's like, okay, d- does this have to be done today? Is there something I have to send back to somebody? Or is this for me for furthering my knowledge? You know, do I need energy to do this? Is this going to be a bit of a heavy lift of a task? Right? And look, being aware, I'm trying to encourage people to be more aware. It's hard at the start because, again, with all productivity, it's very easy to follow somebody else's system and then blame somebody else's system when it doesn't work. I read getting things done 17 times. Why am I not more productive? You know, but that kind of what I would say is if you can add an emotional anchor into this, like why would you bother trying focus drivers? What's in it for you? You know, for me, I I felt erratic, you know, I said at the start, I felt like I was doing so many different things and I didn't feel like I was getting success metrics. I wanted, in a sense, positivity each day rather than, oh, I didn't get stuff done. I'm working every day or I'm, I'm learning every day. I'm doing stuff and I'm putting in the hours. That, you know, just because I didn't accomplish a task doesn't mean I don't deserve some yeah. sort of positive endorphins behind that but it is it is difficult to look internally i will definitely i will definitely say that without a doubt the more you do it the easier it gets but this is just that little small little bit of just being aware of your capabilities and, and honest you know this is a realistic framework it's not about trying to say get as much as you can get done it's about saying would you be better off tackling this now or later on and figuring that out yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that as well about, um, you know, about what your expectations were, why you built this in the first place. Um, <clears throat> something I always wanted to ask, excuse me, my throat's a bit, a bit, a bit messed up. Um, okay. Something I always wanted to ask is um, what has been your outcome? You know, this is your expectation. This is why you created it. Have you seen an outcome mm-hmm. and has it changed? What's the outcome been for you? De- de- definitely, definitely. Yeah, and no, I really appreciate that. Like, I, I feel... I feel more in control of my day, but I also feel much more realistic about my capabilities. I'm a lot more honest with myself and that has a knock on effect that I'm honest with other people. When I know, when I say I'm aiming for two to three sports mods per day, you know, that's like, that's like four and a half hours altogether out of a day. And if I do that, that's really, really good. 
but it means that I can estimate my capabilities a lot better, both motivationally on a day, but also deliverables. So when I look at something and say, well, just to plan that, I'm going to need a sports mode. That's going to be 90 minutes. Then at least I can say, and I can also look at, I already have two sports modes tomorrow. That's a heavy lift. I can say to a client, I'm going to get that done for you in two days time. And I will get it done as well in two days time because I have those other, I, I've kind of built my day around those small and heavy lifts. And I suppose everything, everything's not perfect. And I don't want it to be perfect. Like this for me is kind of organic and, and it's it's light and it's on top of tasks because I know I'm going to naturally procrastinate. I know I'm going to avoid doing tasks that I don't like. But having focused drivers, being able to come back to it and look at the time I spent this week on something and and spot those areas of procrastination, like, I'm, I, you know, willpower is kind of finite and I'm not trying to do this on willpower. I'm trying to, as much as possible, do this with habits and triggers that if I can figure out how can I motivate myself into a sports mode. If I go to gym first thing Monday morning, I might feel great, but I'll probably feel drained when I get back. So come the afternoon, I'll probably be super motivated because I feel like I have actually got some stuff done. Can I stack a few eco tasks on Monday before lunch and then go into some heavy stuff in sports mode in the afternoon? You know, different people are different. Some people can predict what their week is like so they can decide okay every monday morning from 9 to 10 30 i'm going into a sports mode this is what i'm going to do but again it's it's different for people but also i think the, the probably the two biggest things that i that i didn't realize i needed as much on the like started using focus drivers was the kind of the, the ramp up the warm up to actually get into a flow state giving myself that time and permission to prepare rather than just running into something and then just you know that person who comes into the meeting who's so unorganized and they have a bundle of stuff and just give me two minutes i'll find this and i'll find this and i'll find this i don't want to be like that i want to walk in that i'm relaxed i'm ready i'm, I'm confident with it and then i suppose the the second thing that was really important for me was that need for mental breaks that that need for downtime that i until i used focus drivers i thought a break was just a break and um, having a park mode allows me to actually assign tasks to say, stop doing stuff. And I haven't been able to track on a daily basis when I go into Sunsama and review this. I can see if I've had any park modes today. If I go and I have a whole week and I look at the weekly report and it shows me there's no park modes, clearly I'm overworking myself. Clearly there's a problem there. And for me to deliver and to be better, I need those park modes as well. And having a name on them is really, really useful. And I suppose the, probably the last thing is I'm not as hard on myself as I used to be. Like I, I work myself, run my own business. One of the best things ever for anybody to do, one of the scariest things for anybody to do. You, you don't switch off from thinking about it. But with focus drivers, it's allowed me to switch off from thinking about it. It's allowed me to say, you have this error that's just to yourself. Or you have this error to just figure something out as well. And that really has, has been useful for me as well when I have those slow days, those unmotivated days. You know, for me, the, the business, you know, if uh, anyone that runs a business, when you're out of action, when you're sick, when you go on holidays, somebody doesn't come in to fill in for the business owner. So in a sense, you feel like you get punished for taking time off. And I'm trying to, instead of getting to points of burnout and then saying, oh, I need two weeks off, I'm trying to take steady, small time off as much as possible. There's so many good points to running your own business that I'm also trying to smell the roses here as well. And, you know, park mode and off-road mode are not necessarily based on just work-based running your own business. They're also based on, having that rounded life, spending time with your family, seeing your friends that you haven't seen and stuff like that as well. That's brilliant. It's going to give yourself, giving yourself permission to actually yeah. not, not allow, you know, unfinished tasks don't mean you haven't actually done something today. So it's giving yourself that kind of permission. And I, I do believe that I come back better to tackle those things the next day and the day after that. 
Brilliant. And like I said at the beginning, just to go full circle, like one of the things I like the most about this is the, the realisticness. The fact that it doesn't just say, oh, do this, follow these three steps and you're going to be super crazy productive. It's like, this is to be realistic in your real life. Like, you know, follow this and you kind of start to understand yourself, where you're good, where you're bad, what distracts you, what doesn't distract you, what mm. are you doing right now? And I really like that. And even, even what you said about, you know, allowing yourself that come on time. The 20 minutes to actually get warmed up first like a lot of us see other people's output and don't realize that a lot of people need that come on time you're not bad for needing it you're not a, a an ordinary human being for needing it you're like that is part of creating is that that on that warm-up time so i think just the whole thing itself encompasses that and it's, it's brilliant um yeah we're, to, we're all fallible yeah just uh, just uh, we, we're kind of wrapping almost towards the end but i wanted to give you know last question uh, last chance to ask me questions to dave right now um if, if you've got anything to ask in chat but dave also yeah where can people find out a bit more about you you mentioned a few of the projects already where else can people learn about you yeah i mean they they can go to designable.xyz and that is where um i'm kind of helping creatives kind of build businesses and you know think a bit more strategically but also a bit saner so there'll be there'll be more stuff about focus drivers and stuff like that there and then my web design business very easy hd helo delta dot ie um is is my web design business um but really I, I just i want people to kind of take this and just apply it in a way that works for them as well it's it's a it's a life framework but it's it's it will take a little bit of heavy lifting because you're looking internally you're looking inside about you know that honesty of am i actually able to do this today and if you're not perfectly fine for a few times you say no i'm not capable of doing this you'll feel like a failure you'll feel like oh my god why can i not but i guarantee when you come back the next day and you actually do that in half the time you estimated yesterday you will see the point of, of being in tune with your capabilities as well yeah <clears throat> and I, I don't know if you'd be up for this dave but i'd really invite people you know i really love the framework uh, and it's something which i've even ever since you first Thanks mentioned it to me it's something i've really thought about quite a lot when i'm I'm kind of planning my own day. I haven't deliberately made it into the focus drivers or anything yet, but it's something at the back of my mind while I am planning. Um, and I, I invite people if you're up for it. Um, you know, why don't we have this discussion? Why, why don't we post this somewhere and perhaps in the in the, the craft circle forum where people can come to you and say, hey Dave, this this really worked for me. And actually, this thing yeah. I don't quite figure this bit out. So if if you're willing, if you're up for it, I might start the conversation once this is live. And uh, maybe I, I think that's a I think that's a great idea. That's like a the focus driver pace test you know <laughs> t t test test drive for a week and um, yeah look i'm more than happy to um give people any insights and, and content as well on that on what i would be doing in week one or week two and stuff like that as well more than happy to figure that out and likewise any feedback i get from people that's really really helpful for me because that may evolve and change my process as well my process is really the the amalgamation of everything else that I've learned from other people over the years. This is not something that just, you know, landed from the stars in my lap. Awesome. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for the session, Dave. Uh, and thank you, people listening in live um, and those watching on YouTube later. Like, I hope you've enjoyed this off-road time. Like, this is your off-road time. This is your time to explore what you can learn and add to your own work day. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for taking some time to, to listen in. Thank you so much for presenting, Dave. Uh, and we'll be, we'll be showcasing uh, different uh, webinars like this on a pretty much a uh, weekly basis. So keep a lookout for different topics, different ideas, uh, different things to learn going ahead. Uh, any, any closing thoughts? Any, any finishing thoughts, Dave? Uh, really, all I would say to people is to give focus drivers a try. You've nothing to lose from trying it. Just try it out for a week. I just have it in the back of your mind, even if you're not writing anything down and following my process just to have in the back of your mind, what mode am I in right now? Whenever you're executing or doing a task. And likewise, when you're sitting watching TV, you know, what mode am I in? Should I be in this mode right now? Is this the best mode I could be in now? Brilliant. <clears throat> and I think if people were as influenced uh, by this as I was, I think that would be happening organically, even without you prompting that. So thanks again. Uh, and hopefully this time next week, I will be less sick and uh, less sniffy. And <laughs> yeah, get, get well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, enjoy the rest of your, your evening, Dave, uh, and the rest of your days wherever you are. Uh, and we'll, we'll speak soon.